Hey everyone, this is Jeff, LA Fantech. We're gonna go live right now. Check it out. Everyone, uh, thanks a lot for coming down. LA Fantech. We got uh, Daniel right here, the Block Park. He's going to talk about his project, real estate focused with uh, blockchain. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, yeah, so as Jeff said, uh, my name is Daniel Riceberg. I'm the CEO of Block Park. Uh, we are a tokenized real estate com company. So, uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for your support, Jeff. Thanks for hosting. And uh, I'll get started. I'll go through my, my little spiel. And then we'll open it up for questions and answers, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so Block Park is a tokenized real estate company. Uh, what we're creating is a community-driven, self-sustaining investment platform that consists of multiple real estate projects that all share the same token economy, all on blockchain. Okay, and what we essentially are are two companies, uh, one of them being Block Park Token Company, and they're responsible for the issuance of tokens, the technology behind the tokens, and they have a 35% equity interest ownership in Block Park Holdings Company. Block Park Holdings is a real estate company, so they're responsible for the development, construction, and acquisitions of the assets, and ultimately uh, responsible for growing the token economy. You guys with me so far? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, so what's our purpose? What are we doing? Uh, what's the whole point? So we're a security token. That's what BPT is. It's a security token, which is creating the token economy, which makes the whole reason uh, of what makes a utility token a security token. So I'm just going to read this statement uh, here because my attorney, I have to say it this way. Uh, Block Park is pioneering. <laughs> A new way uh, to derive income from a distributed ledger by implementing a token economy using cryptocurrency. So we call these tokens, our tokens, block tokens, BLOK. BLOCK was taken, so that's, that's where we're at. So what I initially wanted to say was we're pioneering a whole new revenue stream. But I can't say revenue stream because we can't use revenue stream as like um, in a performa when we're you know, working on our yield and uh, determining our cap rates. So because it's a security and uh, using the supply and demand principle, uh, we should increase that value of the token uh, and that would be the, the additional income that's coming in. So it's not a revenue stream, however, by the implementation of the token economy, we can create an entirely new income source, uh, which, is, which is what it's all about. And that, and that's, that has huge implications. Uh, one, we can develop housing where housing is needed. So in areas like Las Vegas, uh, Salt Lake City, Oklahoma City, basically anywhere that's not Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, uh, where the cost to build is far more than the cost of living. So what happens in Las Vegas, for example, is where I'm from, um, is you can't get these uh, nicer units built unless they're going to be you know, high-end, luxury, VIP, um, and what that does is destroy communities, I, in, my, in my opinion. Um, so uh, what this will allow to do is not only build these properties in, uh, in areas that need housing, but it also will relieve uh, rents and uh, provide attainable uh, rents uh, in areas where there's high demand, like Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, right? Because now we're 
uh, owners and developers are on the token economy. We can now say, okay, well, we don't have to put pressure on our tenants, on our own communities, by having to increase the rent 3% every year. And as a property owner, it's tough for me because I'm saying, okay, well, I'm capped at 3%, so I can only raise at 3%. I have my investors to pay off because I want to hit my yield, but um, you know, I'm going to have tenants that are going to move out. If there's no rent control, then it's great. I can go for market rents. The problem there is the market might already be inflated, so prices are high, and what's going to happen is they're going to move out, high turnover, people, uh, new people are going to move in, and then you have the bad gentrification coming in, which just makes it <coughs> terrible. So um, that's what it is. Uh, the key to the token economy um, is basically due to a finite number of block tokens distributed within a controlled ecosystem, the value of those tokens should increase based on the demand we create. So that's how it all works, by having um, a finite number of tokens. So Block Park, Block Park Token Company, we're going to issue 200 million tokens to be distributed and used as a security within our distributed ledger, okay? So by adding properties to this ledger, we can um, increase the value by um, creating that demand and having a, a finite supply of those tokens being used within the token economy. How do we create the demand? All right, well, uh, one I just said was block parks, right? So block parks can be built uh, from the ground up construction, which is fantastic. Um, another way we can get these block parks is to acquire them, just Properties that are already operating, so we just go in. I like your attention. You're here, man. You're you're feeling it. So um, so we can acquire these properties. So uh, and we just add them to the token economy. All good. And those are block parks. Another way and a great way that we can add to the token economy is through uh, third party uh, adoption of the token economy. So with that, we would basically offer um, tokens or capital or maybe a mixture and uh, to another developer, property owners, or a REIT, or you know, uh, anything that has a portfolio of properties in exchange for their properties to be on our blockchain. So and that would be immediate uh, use cases that should drive up the value of the token. That's the demand. How does it work? So everyone's like, well, you gotta buy block tokens? Mm. Um, no. All right. So uh, that's a question I get asked all the time. It's like, well, you know, we're not Bitcoin people. Well, that's fine. Um, so what we're doing, uh, we have a, uh, we're going to be on the Stellar platform, which is, is an exchange, um, or it's a, um, I don't know what it is. Jeff would know more about that. But uh, basically, they're helping us out because they have a, what we're calling an under the hood exchange. So you can pay U.S. currency. And they, through their exchange, they will make it uh, like purchase block tokens. That's what we call under the hood. So for example, uh, if you wanted to live in a block park, when you sign your lease, you would have to open up an account, verify your identity, connect your bank account, and ultimately you're going to get a Stellar wallet. Okay? Um, and once you have that wallet set up, you're going to be paying your rent um, through our UI. So through that, um, that, that uh, payment gateway. So it's just like paying on an app or a website. I pay my rent right now already through, uh, through the website. And you're going to be buying block tokens. And then those tokens will be redirected right to block park management. And the whole point is we're going to accumulate those tokens. We're going to hold on to as many of those tokens as possible uh, to create that demand right? by holding on to the supply. And all we're going to liquidate are the property expenses, such as taxes, uh, maintenance, operating costs, basically. So the net revenue of the projects, as long as they have a positive cap rate, which they should, um, we should be able to increase the demand. Um, and do that do uh, the impl implementation, implementation of the token economy, have that whole new revenue stream driving that security up. So um, let me say market makers. So we've been talking to a lot of market makers. So initially, when we first start, there's going to be a one-year hold on those tokens, uh, which is fine uh, because in a real estate venture, uh, it's going to take a while for things to get started anyways. People don't expect returns for at least a year on, those to uh, on a real estate project. So during that year, we'll be setting up those UIs and working with market makers to make sure uh, when we go live, when the token migration happens, that um, there'll be enough liqui liquidity in the market to, uh, to handle the token economy. All right, revenue streams. So uh, one of them 
uh, that we already talked about was the uh, security token, right? So as security, uh, the value can go up based on the block parks, the third party adoption of the block parks, and obviously the overall potential and growth of the company that will be adopted by the open market, uh, being traded on an open exchange. So the more profitably we are internally, uh, the more profitable we should be externally to um, people that just want to buy the tokens on an open exchange and hold the tokens and trade uh, and sell and that sort of thing. Revenue streams. Because we are a holdings company and Block Park Token Company is a 35% owner, um, equity share holder of Block Park Holdings, they're entitled to dividends. And this is a really cool part because dividends will get paid uh, through those block parks via wallet to wallet. So it'll be a digital transaction and be paid out in lumens, which is the stellar coin. It can also be paid out in block coins, but like I said, we're trying to hold on to as many block coins as possible. And there's a lot more lumens out there. So um, you can get paid those dividends, and um, that would happen with just the quote on a quarterly basis, and that would happen um, you know, just with the rent coming through on those block parks. Another way uh, you can get the revenue and the dividends is from a sale of a property. So if we sell uh, one of our properties, let's say $10 million or something like that, that $10 million will come, on, come in and it's up to the board who has the, up to their discretion on how they wanna spend that $10 million. And depending on what our coin is trading at and the value of that token, we might pay half in dividends in those coins and then we might just take five million and we might buy block park stock back those tokens back to increase the market cap and you know that might make everybody uh, happier than just paying out those dividends so that's two three um, a merger or partnership from another real estate company uh, in exchange for equity um, for, for their capital so that's another way that revenue can be paid out as a um, as a whole. Can we let yeah. she's stuck <laughs> Can't leave now. <laughs> You're stuck. All right. Uh, which brings me to this: our first block park project. Um, so currently, uh, I have five apartment buildings in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we have uh, acquired entitlements and approvals to build two 15-story towers uh, that will be, like I said, mixed use. They will host 194 residential units. There is a retail component, grocery on the first floor, and uh, there's a rooftop bar and restaurant uh, that's open to the public. The coolest thing about it is on floors two through four, there's 100,000 square feet of hopefully state-of-the-art um, office space, which will be co-working or shared office for like a WeWork or something like that to come in and rent. Um, you know, like I said, we're community driven. This is for, um, you know, to, to bring the community together, to grow communities, to galvanize communities. That's what it's all about. Um, and this one's in downtown Las Vegas. The mayor, Carolyn Goodman, is behind the project. Our uh, councilman, uh, Bob Coffin, is behind the project. The city's excited. It's just really cool. And um, which brings me to downtown Las Vegas. Uh, have you guys been there? Fremont yeah. Street? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, so what's happening down there is just a, a total renovation, a cultural takeover that's so beyond gaming and entertainment. So as everyone in the room knows that Las Vegas is already the number one entertainment capital in the world, uh, what's happening in downtown is, is beyond gaming and entertainment. Um, now with like technology, which started by... Um, Tony Shea, who's the CEO of Zappos, has personally invested $350 million of his own money to create a company called Downtown Project, which has built um, you know, a whole new infrastructure there. Of course, Zappos is there, which is Amazon. And uh, they also, uh, besides all the bars and the restaurants, uh, they, they host a uh, Life is Beautiful Festival, which brings in about 150,000 people once a year. And it's kind of like an art show, a music show and everything else, it's just fantastic. It's really great um, to be a part of. And that's the, that's the community uh, that the Downtown 57 is in. And we call it the Downtown 57 because currently there's 57 units. So uh, we just stuck with the name and you know it sounds cool. So also, um, Nevada as a whole is, is a really good place for blockchain. They passed Senate Bill 398 and uh, which means that there can't be any like excessive tax or any tax on blockchain technology entities or cryptocurrency entities. 
uh, which is cool. Also, um, no excessive or additional permitting for those kind of entities either. Um, also, they're offering uh, huge incentives for developers to come in and build in quality census tracts. QCTs are areas where a government will come in and will say, okay, we want this area redeveloped. They're usually downtown, uh, which ours is, and they're gonna give us um, about 10 to $12 million in new market tax credits. So the total cost of the project is $120 million. Um, so, uh, so that's that, it's expensive, but um, it's totally worth it. So anyway, um, and plus uh, Las Vegas um, is also the number, is the third highest, uh, is the third highest uh, growing city in the nation according to Forest Magazine, and it is the number one appreciating city for 2018, uh, according to, uh, or will be, according to Housing Wire, so, which is pretty cool. Uh, all right, um, so yeah, and plus they have the, uh, the NFL team, uh, Oakland Raiders, and the uh, NHL team, Golden Knights, who took the Stanley, or went to the Stanley Cup, so it's happening in Las Vegas. They're already, uh, as big as Seattle, if you guys didn't know, and will be bigger than Seattle in the year 2020. So that's our first block park, and it's our first flagship, or will be our flagship property. And our roadmap, uh, starting uh, in May, June, that just passed, uh, we, we, uh, we incorporated in Delaware as a, um, as a, um, as a Reg D, so uh, Reg D uh, 506C, so there is a one year hold on the tokens, and that also means it's accredited investors only to come in. Um, and then July through September, we're gonna go through our pre-sale and then our regular sale. We're gonna be on a road show, uh, Korea, Singapore, Japan, uh, some other cool places. And then um, October uh, to October 19, that's pretty much our holding period. We're going to build out our blockchain, our UIs for both BPH and BPT. Uh, and obviously acquire properties that we can and get them ready to uh, go live on the uh, block park blockchain. All right, that's it. <laughs> Question. Yeah. <laughs> where you, uh, when it comes to security tokens, where, where did this rely, or where does this reside with the SEC? Have you checked in with the SEC? Uh, yeah, of course. They do a lot. So, so like, there's a little bit of an overview. So, yeah, so we incorporated in Delaware. So we're the first ones to do this. So uh, Delaware has something where it's, um, we're literally selling shares of stock in the company, uh, which will later um, uh, be like, uh, what is it? Uh, I think it's migrate to, to a digital ledger. So like a SAFT, you know what a SAFT is? No. I think it's simple agreement for future token. Uh, yeah. So, well, it's like um, a safe, but it's like a safe, safe. for tokens. tokens. You're right, so, so basically it's that, but it's not that. Because uh, we're, <laughs> cause it's, it's very similar. So what you're buying is you're buying equity in the company um, through a contract, and then once we migrate to the digital ledger, you get your tokens that way. And that's, and that's their, Delaware's, it's been awesome uh, to do that. And we have a, like a full on PPM, it's super expensive, and we've gone through Quite a process. I have some friends in the room that uh, have known like me for a while now, and it's just we were supposed to. This was supposed to happen last year. So, anyways, um, they definitely know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about taxes? What about taxes? Yeah. Yeah. So taxes. I mean, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Uh, taxes. Property. They'll be taxed like a regular security. No, I mean income taxes. So I don't on think the tax expert. So. Yeah, I would. I would. There's all. There's a huge section of the PPM rise that I'll, I'll forward to you. So yeah, taxes. You have to pay your taxes, Brandon. <laughs> 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 Any other questions, anyone? Yeah. On this security token, my my first question is: If I buy, if I take ownership of this token, buy the token, okay. What do I actually get? What is the? What kind of rights? What kind of you're, you're buying you're buying equity in Block Park Token Company, which uh, depending on how much you want, there'll be a discounted price, more than likely, uh, probably queue out. So you'll get a number of tokens for so for, my number for of your investment. My tokens will percent the percentage ownership of the Block Park Company. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. So it's yeah. Equity, it's equity. More yeah, more you're getting equity, equity. and um, okay. you know as a, as a security. So. Okay. 
why does this need to be and have a token? Why not? I mean, how is this different than just another real estate investment? You invest in and you get equity. And you mean then just to get regular money? Yeah. Because of the token economy. You know, that's so the you're really biggest betting thing. on the token economy expanding and. Yeah, because what happens is, you know, when you're trying to pencil a project on a development deal, uh, you know, a, a developer's yield, they're usually looking at a seven and a half to eight and a half cap, and you want like a 150 basis point spread there, right? So when the building goes vertical, you can cash out and you're done. So unfortunately, um, that doesn't work in a lot of places, like the ones I was talking about. So by the token account, by using a security token, it's a whole new revenue stream that's now in there. And I, I can't say revenue stream because it's, it's not that. But, um, but you can, you can't quantify how much that token could be worth, and at the end of the year, in taxes, you are you, know, you are you know uh, claiming you know, income, so it is income. So if real estate crashes, you still got the token. Well, uh, what's well? That's a good point, actually. <laughs> so yeah, if the real estate crashes, um, the token economy, because the the pressure is no longer on. The, on the tenants or even on the owner to having to keep increasing the rent. You know, the pressure is now on the size of the company. So yeah, by having, you know, more and more and more properties included into your blockchain, then yeah, it, you, the token economy far out, outgrows any one real estate. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's nothing compared to what it can be. So that's why even like uh, originally I was like, well, we need to raise enough money so we can buy the property in cash, right? No lender, uh, no anchor tenants. Let's just you know let's just do it. Let's just have housing. Uh, and then sure enough, um, I realized because I wanted to support the token, you know, one for one. But uh, I realized that's that's I'm, I'm selling myself short, you know, because with with leverage I can increase the the ROI. And uh, you know, which will bring more value to the token. I can add more buildings uh, to the token economy, and what the coin will be worth, what the fund will be worth, is way more than one property, even if it's two hundred million dollars. So, uh, being a security token, you know, what are the extra compliance issues you have to go through? You know, what's the cost of that to your company? Right. So the cost ICO right now is costing. I spent about almost two hundred fifty thousand. Just the security token. Now, being the security token, what's the cost component of that? Like, if you you suddenly have to go through a lot of compliance issues, and that compliance issues cost you, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if you've had. A yeah, it's going to be the whole that. ICO. Take it there's going to be around five to six hundred thousand dollars. Is the cost, you know? But that's that's basically finding out how to you know how to do it. And then, uh, which, which is costly, and then the conversion, the token migration, is to your blockchain developers and that whole thing. Stellar has been really cool. Stellar, um, they don't have the ERC20 contract, which runs on the Ethereum uh, platform. It's like it's, it's all built in. It's all right there. It's much easier to generate tokens through Stellar. Uh, way easier. So that you think it cost less, but it doesn't. Matter. Why not Polymath? On Polymath, you can do STOs instantly. Yeah, so, yeah. How, how do you what? plan to keep tokens? Like which exchange, which wallets, and it's basically the cyber system. STO, yeah. what exactly? So, if I'm getting my equity, so either is a, like the whole process of token economy, so I can send my tokens to somebody, I can actually influence the, like, on token economy, you can build an ecosystem. You know, use the token economy. So, can you just disclose this part? Maybe how investor to investor relationship? You, yeah, like, like peer to peer trading, you mean? No, for example, she and me invested in Block Park. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. And are we allowed between ourselves to send tokens? Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, yeah. how, and how it will be reflected on a document, because every S, uh, STO, since it's equity share. Yeah, so, right, so, so through Stellar, they can make that de digital ledger into a paper ledger like that. It, that's really easy for all the, um, you know, FINRA and uh, the old pad. Anyway, uh, that's covered, and they said they can do all that stuff. Um, but blockchain, and we didn't even talk about blockchain technology, really. Um, 
you know, that that's, you know, a lot of people here uh, already know it. It's obviously uh, transparent, secure. It's a digital ledger that can easily get all that information and be printed to. Uh, is it easy, easy to dump? Huh? Easy to dump. Like you, you mentioned the soft agreement, and usually after soft, when you, once you sign it, you have like the dump on exchange. So, how you plan to calculate those fair value? Like even with the real estate. So you mean so there's no dump? Yeah, like basically you create the token, which back to which right, 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 right. So how you plan so to which the, exchanges you're gonna use? Right. For so there is the year hold. Um, we're trying to sell all their tokens uh, in the sale, and there's gonna be contingencies in the contract that they can't dump all the tokens. And we've been talking to a lot of market makers. Well, yeah. We're gonna give them a bunch of tokens too, and they're gonna be controlling the market. Um, not so much market manipulation, but there's gonna be we're gonna make it so where you can't do. Question for you: For the renter, do they need to know that this is a block building, or they just, or to them, will just feel like I can, I can just pay my rent. I like this building, downtown 57. Yeah, absolutely. I, can I just rent there? I don't have to worry about being part of that. You still have to when you absolutely. You'll still have to when you sign their lease. Yeah. You'll have to fill out an account. Okay. And that verifies your identity. It'll verify your bank account. And you know, once they do so, the first time I'm sorry, we're done. So maybe I don't want to participate in the economy. I just want to live in absolutely. You won't even know it. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, like last one. Uh, you mentioned the Reg D and like 506, which one, B or C? Uh, 506 C. C. Yeah. Yeah, we're also um, eligible for EB5. So we're going to have a lot of uh, foreign money uh, hopefully come in. Um, and it's a good project for them because it is real estate. We're providing a bunch of jobs uh, with the development of the downtown 57. Are you able to say what um, lawyers are? Hmm? What lawyers or firm you use? Yeah, uh, we're using we're using uh, Deluca and Lawler and Associates. He's like the securities extraordinaire, very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> On my ass. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, we had to change our wording several times. Initially, the co-working space was uh, an accelerator that we were going to invest some of those tokens in and invest in. Companies that, that we liked, all on blockchain, um, completely decentralized, and how we choose what companies we were going to invest in. Um, but we can't do that. Uh, at least not in this stage. Because it's uh, a security is my <laughs> So, what's the minimum investment? Uh, yeah, so we're still deciding that. Um, so, it was kind of cool actually. So, the minimum investment, I'm thinking maybe $10,000. Uh, we might increase that. But, um, you know, it's credit investors only. Uh, however, um, the, for block park holdings, that we might have room to to invest for investors up to five hundred thousand dollars, and you don't have to be a credit investor because it's in block park holdings. You wouldn't be issued Class B tokens that are going to be in the uh, BTT category. Uh, you're going to be issued like ownership tokens of block park holdings that they're going to be holding. So it's two entities of potential investment. Uh, yes, but uh, one of them is. Block Park Holdings is just a real estate company that has Block Park Token Company. So Block Token. Park Holdings is the one that does the actual physical development, mm -hmm. and then the other one does... Issues the tokens, and it'll be the technology behind the tokens, and that company owns 35% equity of Block Park <laughs> Holdings. Any other questions, anyone? I know you're trying to ask more. I have a question. If you didn't do your ICO the way you did now, would you consider using Start Engine? So yeah, so we, we talked to Start Engine a lot, and uh, we decided not to go through there because they just weren't raising that much money, and we didn't feel like it was really. But they could price. also do the Stellar thing and everything. That yeah, and they they also do uh, T zero and, and and whatnot. And they have a really good um, uh, KYC and uh, AML protocol system through uh, their system. So it's good. They wanted twenty-five thousand dollars up front, and then they were char charging, I think, four percent or something like that on the rate. But um, we just decided it's cheaper to do it your way now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I think our way is more controlled. It's more customized, which is what I like, and uh, I don't know, we have more control over it. Any other questions, everyone? Thank you. So the, uh, the blockpark.com. The blockpark.com. Okay. No cool. Pay. Yeah.
Thanks a lot. Thanks, John. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, John. 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 Th